Superhero and supervillain identities are rarely static. Sidekicks take over, continuity gets rewritten, and heroes and villains routinely switch sides. But even among a list of strange legacy characters, Red Hood may be one of the oddest. From his origin as one of Batman's oldest foes, to a completely different origin involving an alternate universe Superman, here's a rundown of Gotham's strangest villain-turned-vigilante. College Criminology Red Hood first appeared in Detective Comics No. 168, a story about Batman guest lecturing at a college to teach students criminology. Oddly enough, the first appearance of the Red Hood is actually in a flashback, and Batman enlists his students to help him solve the mystery of a criminal that escaped him ten years ago. When the Red Hood shows back up on the college campus to steal some priceless artifacts, Batman manages to trap him. It turns out that the Red Hood is an illiterate groundskeeper, Earl Farmer Boy Benson. Well, not quite. Farmer Boy had actually captured the real Red Hood earlier so that he could use his costume to go on his own crime spree. The real Red Hood? Believe it or not, it was the Joker all along, giving Batman's greatest enemy an iconic origin. Why a dopey groundskeeper could capture and undress the Joker when Batman usually can't is another story altogether. Zero Year in Zero Year, a revamped origin story for Bruce Wayne saw him come into conflict with the Red Hood Gang, a group of criminals who enlisted ordinary Gotham citizens to don the trademark Red Hood through blackmail and extortion. The leader of the gang went by Red Hood 1, and his sleeper cell of Red Hood followers managed to be a pain in Wayne's side long enough for him to create the Batman persona. Although Zero Year never explicitly confirmed that Red Hood 1 was the Joker, his climactic showdown with Batman did end in an Ace Chemicals warehouse, which is the birthplace of the Joker in most continuities, so readers were left to their own conclusions. Still, while the Joker might have been the first Red Hood, he's certainly not the only one, and arguably not even the most famous one. The Short Life of Jason Todd The most famous Red Hood and the character who's worn the mantle the longest would be Jason Todd, former Robin. Originally, Jason Todd's parents were acrobats murdered by Killer Croc, until Crisis on Infinite Earths, a massive event that saw DC retconning various story threads. Following Crisis, Jason Todd was an orphan who was taken under Batman's wing after stealing the tires off the Batmobile. This revamped Robin was haunted by his life on the streets and constantly filled with rage, and despised by some readers. A 1-900 number was advertised in the pages of Batman, encouraging readers to vote on whether Jason Todd would live or die. In Detective Comics number 428, his fate was revealed. No. Jason Todd Redux Jason Todd's death was set in stone until 2002's Batman Hush when it looked like Jason Todd had returned from the grave. A twisting arc that brought Batman up against most of his rogues gallery, it all came to a head when then-Robin Tim Drake was kidnapped by Jason Todd, who was supposed to be deceased. As it turned out, it was actually Clayface mimicking the former Robin. While Jason's return from the dead had been a ruse, the plot twist did convince writer Judd Winnick to bring Jason Todd back to life for real in Under the Hood. How he actually came back was a bit of a doozy involving Infinite Crisis, which had an alternate version of Superman punching stuff so hard that he broke time. Because of this reality-altering punch, Jason Todd was brought back to life and wandered the streets in a crazed state until he returned to Gotham with a new identity, the Red Hood. As the Red Hood, Jason was a lethal vigilante, killing criminals and torturing the Joker, while also coming to blows with Batman. The story arc ended with Jason as the Red Hood poised to become a much more lethal vigilante than Gotham was used to. Red Hood and Scarlet Red Hood's rivalry with the Bat Family came to a head while Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne had taken over as Batman and Robin. In a fit of jealousy, Jason started his own dynamic duo with his own twisted child sidekick, Scarlet, a girl that had been horrifically scarred by a supervillain after Damian failed to save her. Not coincidentally, the story arc involved Red Hood giving Gotham City a number to call to vote about whether or not to unmask Batman and Robin, a metatextual wink to Jason Todd's own fatal phone pole. Animating the Hood DC adapted Jason Todd's story into an animated feature, but in the interest of not having to explain the complicated events of Infinite Crisis, Jason's resurrection was simplified to be the sole product of the Lazarus Pit, but the adaptation was otherwise fairly accurate to the comic events. You want to rule them by fear, but what do you do with the ones who aren't afraid? I'm doing what you won't. I'm taking them out! Red Hood would also appear in Batman the Brave and the Bold, an animated series that deliberately featured a light tone straight from the Silver Age. In the episode Deep Cover for Batman, 
Batman travels to Earth-23, a world where the roles of heroes and villains are switched. Batman's counterpart is Owlman, the villainous leader of the Injustice Syndicate, while Owlman's arch-nemesis is the Red Hood, a vigilante fighting for justice even after being knocked into a vat of chemicals. Sound familiar? Considering that Jason Todd spent a decent amount of time killing criminals, Earth-23 Red Hood might actually be the most heroic of all. What? What, your moral code just won't allow for that? It's too hard to cross that line! Red Hood Live Gotham, the live-action show ostensibly about Bruce Wayne becoming Batman, has a knack for remixing continuity for a new audience, and it's already had an impact on the Red Hood. While Red Hood stories usually revolve around the Joker's origin or Jason Todd's new identity, Gotham mixed it up by positioning the Red Hood as an actual Red Hood. So what is it? Well, it's a hood. Thought it would, uh, you know, spice things up. When do we start wearing hoods? We didn't. What, was I supposed to get one? No! When the headgear seems to convey good luck, the media dubs the bank robbers the Red Hood Gang, the criminals begin fighting over who gets to actually wear the item. Eventually, the hood proves to be not so lucky, leaving the hood in the hands of a young boy who pantomimes shooting the police. No matter who wears the identity, the Red Hood sure seems to be unlucky. Still, at least the gang in Gotham didn't get dumped into a vat of chemicals or get resurrected by an evil Superman's fit of rage. So, points to Gotham. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.